Okay. <clears throat> Today's session is mobile device synchronization. Syncing information between a desktop, laptop, and a mobile device is a feature that most clients want to utilize. As I said before, the Palm Pilot was one of the doohiggies that came out where everybody was trying to show off because you got your emails, you got your, your actual contacts all in your Palm. The only bad thing about that little puppy is that it always had to sync with an actual computer. It didn't have any type of Wi-Fi. One great thing is that at one point it did have Bluetooth, if I recall correctly. Otherwise, you had to sync over a USB cable. Nowadays, there's many types of information that's being synced, applications that can be installed uh, to perform synchronization, and a number of connection methods that are being used. We're going to learn why and how to synchronize data between mobile devices when it comes to obviously in the corporate world. By the end of this session, our ultimate goal is to be able to describe the purpose and the value of synchronizing this data between the mobile devices and your actual laptops, desktops, or the cloud itself. Identify these types of data that can be synchronized and the two main synchronization methods. Describe the connection types available to enable synchronization. Name the steps to synchronizing the data and identify your given pitfalls when synchronizing this information. As I stated, at first it was just as simple as connecting to your Outlook just to get your contacts information, your little to-do list, and your emails. Now, the types of data that we can synchronize include not only your contacts, you got programs that you can sync with, emails, pictures, music, videos, calendar, bookmarks, documents, location, social media, you name it, even your ebooks. This is with the capabilities now on all the new phones that are coming out that have obviously have to be smartphones let me rephrase that because some people don't have smartphones and the capability of synchronizing this could be directly still with your desktop and or synchronize with the cloud to increase synchronization security mutual authentication can be activated on these mobile devices some devices come with a sync feature installed, but many devices rely on additional synchronization with these applications that they're working with. This will require ongoing software updates or depending if it is the actual internal applications or internal networks, sometimes you have to add a third party application just to be able to VPN connection inside that given network. This synchronization process can be carried out over several methods. It, as I stated before, you can do it by USB, you can do it by Bluetooth, or you can do it now through 802.11. Some people obviously in these mobile devices also have their data on their actual phones. Any questions or doubts at this point? Nope. So, our main behavioral skill that we'll be focusing on is customer focus and future orientation. Obviously, we require customer focus to be able to understand exactly what the problem and where it lies. Our future orientation selves is always growing because these things just keep on changing. As I said, there was the Palm Pilot then there was this one that I loved. It was actually, it looked like a little mini laptop. I, to this day, I can never remember the name of it. But it was cool because it actually had Windows Mobile on it. So you could actually use Windows. You could use Excel. You could use all these things. And this is when the Palm Pilot was famous. Before your iPhone even came out, this thing was ahead of its times. But obviously, oh, what was even better about it, you could put a PCM CIA card into this little puppy. So I was able to go wireless with a Wi-Fi, or if I wanted to connect to the network and I didn't have wireless and I needed dial-up, I could actually switch, flip out, switch out the little PCM CIA card and put in my modem. So uh, 
all these things have grown and change and future orientation in that answers we have to be prepared to be able to grow and learn all the different types well if we can have Alturo help me out please sure overview of synchronization overview smartphones and tablets can synchronize or sync with local pcs or with cloud-based servers to keep files and data up to date Benefits of synchronization include backup of data, data availability in multiple and multiple devices at the same time. Easy to set up a new device, download updates and patches. Process. Various mobile devices sync differently depending upon the device vendor and software required. All of them allow to decide which data to sync on the settings from the email app or from the OS. Thank you. So as we stated, overall, the major benefits that you have is you're able to back up your data. So now your actual information that's on this phone that might have not been on your computer, you can actually sync and bring it back and forth, just like your Palm Pilot. Sometimes there was stuff that you did on the Palm Pilot that you wanted to make sure that it's synced, and it was the same on all applications that you're using. Any questions or doubts? All right, mutual authentication. This is basically when both parties have to agree. The server verifies that the credential of the client and the client says, yes, I do know who you are. You are the right server. They make sure that both are who they say they are before they actually start with the sync. It adds, obviously, additional security. Both Androids and iOS have this, typically using SSL. One of the challenges uh, presented, obviously, performing this type of authentication is that mobile devices, uh, overall, their relative lack of processing power. This eats up a lot of battery, too, on these uh, puppies when, they, when they're using their actual SSL and their processor. These things are not meant to be being pounded in this way, but at the same time, the better or the newer phones are getting better at it. Either which way, it does eat up processing power to be able to encrypt. Questions, doubts? So, our types of data. We have, as I said, contacts, programs, bookmarks, emails, ebooks, social media, location data is the one that I love. Everyone loves to give their location data, which I just find so cute. I, if you ever look me up in, if you can find me on social media, that's one good thing. Then I could have sworn I'm, I'm hidden, except for LinkedIn too. And if you do find me, I hardly ever post my location. As a matter of fact, I can't remember ever posting my location. I might have said that I, I would put a picture that I was in Disney World, but it'll be like maybe weeks after or or days after I come back. I don't go and post my location and say that I'm not home. I might as well just go ahead and give them my credit card and my PIN. But otherwise, the other things are, are very useful as for your calendar, video, and music. Everyone loves that, especially when the iPod shuffle and all those other things came out. Your contacts, as we stated, is one of the major reasons why these things are out there. It's usually done by push synchronization, which means that it, it does not require you to try to download information. It will be pushed to the mobile device. Applications overall is the program data from the application, such as databases or any other thing that you're using within that application gets synced across the actual cloud or the server, depending on, on how it is. A lot of these things, you'll see them where, where the kiosk itself in the front, where the server is, is actually doing everything, it is connected over the Wi-Fi into the back room of the restaurant. 
to facilitate the orders to the chefs. All these applications sync with each other without having to have any extra um, notifications and or interaction with the users. Bookmarks are that itself. If you guys ever used a bookmark or favorites, depending on where in the world you are in, in your actual, uh, if you're using Internet Explorer, if you're using DuckDuckGo or whatever these things are nowadays, there's so many out there. Uh, the only one that I remember back in the day was Netscape and Firefox, and I believe those, Firefox is the only one that survived from those ages. Questions or doubts? Your email. The mobile device will synchronize, as I said, your contacts, your calendar items, your email. Each time the mobile device uh makes contact with the e email account itself depending obviously if it's pop or if it's imap it may uh, obviously save the email up there as for it itself it is pink push synchronization which usually allows you to configure the push schedule such as every 30 minutes or uh, every five minutes uh, depending on how much you want to waste your battery uh, again your next area here you have is your pictures basically is from your mobile device it will synchronize and or uh, upload them to your desktop obviously that all depends on how in the world you are configured with this mobile device pictures sometimes is not part of that email usually it's not part of the email process it would be part of the actual device synchronization itself and it wouldn't actually synchronize in that process. You would actually have to have sometimes a third party software or some other type of software that syncs with your actual computer. Your documents overall is a technology to be able to sync your documents located in multiple locations around the world. Nowadays, you even have Dropbox, you have Google Drive, you have all these different ways to be able to sync to the cloud. Users have come to expect this functionality to be in an actual mobile device. This is one of the things that they need to have access to. So at the same time, there is other th third party softwares that allow you to sync to my documents in your computer, your computer of work. Again, those require sometimes third party software to create the VPN tunnel to get into your network and be able to sync. Questions, doubts. Next one, which was usually the leading one that started this when it came to Apple. Everybody knows that music is iTunes. Everybody sometimes doesn't know that you could actually go into iTunes and do backups. You can get videos. You can do almost anything out of iTunes, even bring your actual iPad or iPhone up to date. Otherwise, more or less, this is just to be able to make it easier for yourself to go running in the park and instead of going to Pandora, you want to listen to your favorite music only you can sync and bring that into your actual device same thing with your videos your videos libraries can be synced across all of them be fair warning all these synchronizations as always anything that you continuously sync and or use on that phone it will eat up your data so next is a calendar that is obviously usually done again through outlook and or whatever other calendar uh, that they might be using but corporate America usually is using exchange or some type of outlook account in those cases if it is Google Mail or any other ones you can always sync it with the actual application within the phone that facilitizes the actual thing by you configuring it manually into it a lot of the cases as I said in, in fortune 500 they always have some VPN or some other type of application that lets you go into your actual mailbox and calendar next area here is the location data this is usually where you permit an actual device to say where you are it is good when you're doing your actual little gps to trying to get somewhere from here to there i really strongly recommend never doing check-ins into social media as for most social media be very careful with these things because they are very very dangerous a lot of people get hacked with these with these things because they use their phone for their social media. And what do I mean by that? I'm not sure if you ever seen it, but Facebook has been hacked. 
there's been links that people put and say, oh, look at this. Uh, my sister's old boyfriend is looking at her and this and that. Click on here to see it and boom. Fell for it. And there you go. Therefore, I would strongly recommend never using social media in le unless work requires you to actually use it to not sync your social media on your work phones. But it is something that you can keep yourself up to date. Last year is the actual ebooks for those people that love reading books and have your ebook accounts. You can obviously download that application, be it Amazon and or whatever other ebook reader application you have with iTunes whatever that is, iBooks, to be able to read on the go any given book that you have in digital format. Questions, doubts? Synchronization methods. You have your proprietary cable of the old ugly 30 pin Apple or the new skinny eight pin Lightning. The yeah, Androids usually use USB, depending, although it says USB micro B, I've seen already my uh, the USB C being used in a lot of them. The same thing here, it does state that it does see through Wi Fi or your cellular network. At the same time, we need to take note that obviously, if the phone has 4G, 5G, I don't think many people have 2G or any other slower ones, you can obviously sync to the cloud and or back and forth. To a desktop, it requires obviously the applications depending on the OS itself and the disk space. You can use Mac or, or Windows to be able to synchronize. As for storage, it, depending on the space that you're gonna be using to synchronize and store onto your actual computer. As obviously, we need to take note that although these things like Apple and Android allow you to actually sync these devices, What's great about Android that some people don't like about it is you can sync all your photos and allow them to compress them. In other words, not to have them at the original actual size. And technically, technically speaking, from their point of view, you have unlimited uploads in that format. Otherwise, I believe it's only 15 gigs that you get. And I think it's five gigs that iOS allows you or Apple allows you to sync to the cloud. Questions or doubts? Now, as I say allowed, you can always buy more space. The cloud is willing and able to, to give you more space, but more space means more money per month. Overall, Apple devices sync locally through iTunes on the cloud through iCloud iTunes runs the must run the most upmost sorry version. It won't allow you to use it unless you have it the latest and greatest. Then at the same time, if your device has problem, it forces the device when it's syncing to get also the latest and greatest. Does anyone know when? a device in uh, iPhone or an iPad is unable to upgrade to the latest iOS, what would be the problem? It's too old with a hardware incompatibility. Thank you. So fair warning, whenever you run into these devices, which you'll see at one point, they stopped support supporting the old iPad since the iPad won't be able to really technically support the iOS itself. So if you see that some users are stuck and they're unable to get the latest and greatest, they're not able to sync with their computer. iCloud is the only way that I'm aware of that that device will still continue to sync. Otherwise, buy yourself a new one. Questions or doubts? Uh, I just want to say there's also the different types of syn synchronization. For instance, um, uh, on some versions of uh, the Apple synchroni synchronization for uh, photos, if you delete your photos on your device, it'll delete the photos from the cloud too. 
but other types of uh, cloud synchronization, they'll be able to save your photos even if you delete them on your device. That is correct. In iTunes, it will save it to the actual computer and save it there. Another awesome feature and why I like backing up usually to a computer if I can is because of the fact that it will be able to restore your iPad. So what does that mean? If you actually synced it and let's say this iPad finally no more iOS upgrades, right? Fine and dandy. Or maybe it completely died. Fine and dandy. You go get yourself a brand new one and you just sync it and it'll bring back the exact copy with all that has been installed, obviously, except for the iOS, of all the applications and everything synced. I always find that a great feature, especially when you go and you're trying to uh, bring up the, the, your latest iPad since the old, old iPad is just a relic or usually paperweight. As for uh, your actual iTunes, you just open it up. If you have the cable connected to the USB, you'll see the little icon here of the device. You'll be able to, con to actually connect to it itself. And you'll see that it'll appear the amount of apps and space here on the bottom. You'll be able to check for updates or restore, like I said, your actual iPhone or the device. And it allows you to sync itself. So if you want an entire music library or if you don't want to bring anything, you could actually choose what to do with each given device. Any questions? Hopefully some of you have used the iOS. As for synchronization with the cloud, is as basic as that. You just turn on the actual iCloud backup. Fair warning, as I stated, if you're using the actual cellular data, it will eat up your data. If it is Wi-Fi, then just make sure you have Wi-Fi on. As for overall, from what I recall, it only allows you to back up five gigs. Therefore, if your iPad or iPhone has more than five gigs of data, you will run out of space. So you could also choose exactly what you would like to back up. Questions or doubts? Diego, can you hear me? Yo. I'll take over at 17. All right. Amen. Does anyone have an Android device? I do. I do. Okay. okay. So Muhaba, Ayana, Robert, don't this is not for you or for the um Michael, do you have iPhone? I have iPhone on Android. You say you don't have either? No, I have iPhone, not Android. Okay, well then this this slide is for you. So go ahead and read. All right. Android synchronization. Android-based mobile devices don't have a central desktop application similar to iTunes for Apple. Rather, they sync over internet, but only some data sync. Contacts, calendars, and email through Gmail are the only data that sync by default. For every other type of data or media, Android devices treat it like a thumb drive. Third-party apps like Double Twist and Dashlane act like iTunes for Apple. Thank you. The, does anyone use uh, Double Twist or Dash Line? Okay. Yep. So you just use the, your built-in or your removable uh, hard drive as a means of holding on all your information, Bando? Uh, I use Google. Everything's Google. My pictures are backed up to Google and my contacts, all that stuff is backed up to there. Okay. So what about any other, well, I guess that's the data and media that we want. So yeah, that makes perfect sense. I had memory cards, but then I would lose them or they would break. So the cloud just ended up being best for me. Well, what's awesome is that Google has Google Music. I don't know if you guys know that. If you, you could could actually, music now. You, you could upload your music to Google Music, just like if it was the music for iPhone. It's actually good. And, I use it myself. And you and you just go to Google Music and and listen to your music. 
That's what I used to do before Pandora came out. Is I, I used Google Music. I didn't know anything about that. Uh, I miss so, Groove Shop. I'm so tempted Ooh. to change over. Um, but I know one big thing is the SD, like Yusuf just mentioned, the SD card that go that, the mini SD or micro SD. Mm -hmm. You can get it as big as your phone can handle, and I think I've seen it as big as what. Um, 256 or 512 gigs how big does that card how i don't know where the, the limitations are for the device but i've seen those cards get pretty big so you have no need like to pay for storage like i i people end up doing so and you can put all of it on there just don't lose it yeah what i love about it is that the fact just the, the picture part is where they they kill uh, the iPhone because you could actually it's unlimited if you if you allow them to compress it to whatever size obviously it's not going to be a horrible resolution but it's not going to be the high high def so a resolution either what's on your phone stays as high res in other words if you actually download it since it is like a thumb drive if you download it to your computer it'll be on high res but the sync that's on the cloud that's unfortunately maybe at 720. Either oh, way, okay. it's still and and true, we can go mm -hmm. to the next slide, Diego. Mm -hmm. Oh well, no, it's time for last. You kind of stole my thunder a little bit, Diego. I was trying to get in there, but I had to change uh, audio over here. Uh, <laughs> All sorry, yours, man. sir. <laughs> All right, we got a nice little video here. Uh, I'm gonna put student mode. Uh, let's see. If we put student mode. Yeah, it'll it'll play over here. I see it. Just make sure we don't get double audio. So I recommend everyone mute your Nearpod and listen to one on Zoom. Just make sure we get that all set. We'll show you how to back up an iPhone, and then we'll show you how to back up an Android phone. Let's get started. On the home screen, tap. Oh, we lost audio. Tap iCloud, then tap what? the little slider next to the desired. You lost uh, start. audio? Hold on a second, man. It's back it now. It eventually came back, Diego. No, no, no. That was because I turned my mic on. That's why. Uh, hold on a second. Let me go back over here. This should help. And then pop. Started. On the home screen, tap settings. Tap your Apple ID at the top of the list. If prompted, sign in with your Apple ID. Tap iCloud, then tap the little slider next to the desired apps you want backed up. Tap the iCloud Backup app at the bottom of the list. Turn on iCloud Backup if it's disabled. Tap Backup Now and wait for the backup to complete. Next up, we're gonna show you how to back up your Android phone. Just get into your settings menu, and once you're in the settings menu, you can tap the search bar or search button and type backup. That gets you to the Google backup section. You sh All right, this is a very important question. Right, this is a very important question. Why do you think a technician Why do you think a technician meant the search pop-up? Oops, sorry, I got some double sorry, I got some double speak going. The search option can let you search find option it. can let you find it. quickly. Quickly. Hold on. We're gonna mute everybody on my hand. Everyone has an open mic. Everyone has an open mic. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. No, I still hear. I still hear. I don't hear anything. I hear it too. It's a little better now. I hear it too. It's a little better now. Maybe it's only me. I'm hearing people speak. Yeah. I'm getting double on everybody too. Ayana, yeah. you were doubled. Yeah, I heard it at the end. I'm only getting double on last. Zank is stopped. Yeah. Testing? Yeah, proceed, Laz. It sounds like you're good. Okay, good. Maybe that was the Zoom thing. All right. So why did he mention a search rather than doing what he did with Apple where he just said settings, 
Notice he did this one differently. Does anybody have an idea? And it's important to mention the real world about this. It's faster. Well, that's that's one point, but there's another it's, reason why. And why it's is different it because of the brand. Android update and they change things. Well, Google is well known for search, so they have very powerful search capabilities. There's a search option also on iPhone, though. I say depending on what uh, brand of the Android phone they're using, it could be different from um, phone to phone. So if he was to show them how to go to uh, backup on that specific brand, it'd be different from the others. Wow, you gave me an advanced level question, and that is correct. I have a feeling you worked in the phone business at some point. No? Well, that was a good answer. That is actually yeah. a high-level answer that I would accept as well. Uh, when it comes to Android, they have their own versions. You can think of Google Pixel, Samsung, LJ. They all have their own little distro of the Android. And later on, we're going to talk about that. What does it mean when you use the word distro when it comes to Linux? Because of that, there are many ways. And also, when you update a phone, even the same brand themselves can easily change how you do it. So that's actually what I'm looking for. For example, Android will, will lose you going to a different type of candy. That's how they do their updates from brownies to marshmallows. And every time they go up, they tend to change a lot of the settings. Apple is very consistent. They usually stay with the option. You go to settings, you go here, they keep it pretty consistent. That's what I like about Apple. Android tends to change a lot of things, including their UIs and settings. That's one thing that gets annoying. That's why he mentioned search. But Robert had a more high level answer, which I would agree to. Depending on the brand known as a distro of the Android can also be very different. Search would be a better answer here. That's good. Very happy to get that answer. All right, let's move along the video. You should see a toggle button next to backup to Google Drive. And just below that, the Google account that your info is being backed up to. Make sure the toggle is on, which is to the right. After turning the backup on, go ahead and tap backup now. Then just wait for it to complete. And there you go. Yeah, this is a question here. Could you use a different backup for Android? Not a trick question. Yeah, I believe so. Yep. There should be applications that allow um, for backup. Excellent. Yeah. Just a little, little question I like to throw out to make sure people are listening. <laughs> Pretty much they're very similar if you think about them, how they do their backup. The same procedure. You go to settings, you make sure you select the backup that they allow, and you're good to go. So thankfully, that's pretty easy nowadays. Now, Windows phones is a different story, but luckily I doubt you're gonna get that on the exam. I believe we have one slide coming up that just mentions it a little bit. And here we go. It's pretty bare bones for a reason. Uh, it's, there's not a lot of Windows phones out there. I don't even think they're supporting them that much anymore, Microsoft. And the only thing you can use is a third party like Zoom. And that's only for phones for Windows 7. So if you have a Windows 7, you're going to need Zoom. Now you could use a Windows Phone app, which it says is for after Windows 8, which is true. It's known as your phone right now on Windows 10. Granted, I've used it before. I personally don't like it. Um, yeah, and they use something called OneDrive where Apple has iTunes, iCloud, Android has usually Google. For Windows, it's usually OneDrive. That's their version of the cloud. And that's their, that's method their method of updating. updating. Oh, I'm getting double. Oh, I'm getting double. Testing. 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 Nope, I still got double. I still got double. Maybe someone can take over. Can take over. Okay. So um, we got synchronization issues and pitfalls. We have Benjamin. All 
right. synchronization, right. synchronization issues and pitfalls. Am I still doubling? Or are we still no. doubling? No. Oh, okay. I hear everybody fine. <laughs> I hear double, but it's all good. Cool. All right. Incomplete sync. The most common synchronization issue is incomplete sync of data due to the connectivity issues, device, device issues, or even remote infrastructure issues. Sometimes synchronization issues can cause an incomplete downloading of email or even duplicate email. Solution, the most likely culprit is connectivity issues with Wi-Fi or cellular connections. The problem is usually resolved by moving the device to an area with stronger signal. Um, other problems, authentication issues, OS version issues, um, incorrect configuration settings, and different providers of the same service could conflict when synchronizing. All right. Um, have anybody had issues with syncing their device? It's almost seamless to this point. And it typically happens on the back end, especially when you're using the cloud. But has anyone has a recent issue or a, a memorable one, one that they would like to share? I take silence. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Brenda. Oh, I, I had one recently. It told me that my Google Drive was full, so I couldn't sync my email or um, pictures or any of that stuff until I bought more storage. You bought more storage. Um, how, what's the yeah. going rate? What's the going rate for storage for um, Android Google devices? I think I had to do one that was 20 for the year. Uh, so I definitely need to figure out another way to back up all my stuff so I don't have to pay that come next year. And how much did you were you allowed to say before you had to pay that? I guess that's the next question. Uh, maybe 15 gigs or something. I don't even know. Let me see. That's a lot of pictures, Benda. I think. I think, and like with with, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, folks. Uh, Apple is like five gigs. I think it's still that, maybe ten. I know. Yeah, I'm it's it. fifteen no, it's because Apple it includes. One, I thought. Like they were the they were the least from what I remember. I could be wrong. Oh, okay. Google gives so much though because it it includes your drive as well. It's your drive and your email and your pictures. Yeah, Got gotcha. you. I think and also, Google doesn't uh, Google doesn't give you unlimited uh, picture storage on lossless quality. They reduce the quality of your images. Yeah, that's true too. I think they they'll they don't if you have the Pixel because they want people to buy the Pixel, which is a really nice phone. Oh, good. I still get my Pixel too. Excel. Yeah, those Pixel those Pixel pictures are really nice. Yeah, they look nice. We can go to the next slide, Diego. All right, and we're going to be taking care of that too. So let's get to the next page. And basically, let's do a little review here. Okay, optional updates, synchronization. Mobile devices can sync data through three different ways. So basically, what they're talking about here is how are you going to upload this data? Local. Anybody have idea what is local related to? Any ideas? Your PC? Okay, on your computer. There you go. Yes, computers. And usually use cable or any short versions of Wi Fi. That's good. As long as you can connect it local, that's what it's referring to. And then, an exam, they'll give you trick questions like that. If they say local, it's being literal. It's local, your PC, not the cloud. Now, let's go to external connections to the cloud. Sync through Wi Fi or cellular network. Here, it's the internet, the internet, just like we mentioned before. So it doesn't matter if you put a cable or you got through the internet with four gig or five gig now, as long as you can communicate to the internet known as the WAN, you are syncing through the internet with your cloud. Good. And now here is the oddball of them all, Bluetooth. Why do you think I'm calling Bluetooth the oddball here. Anybody have an idea why? Because it's just for cars? Is well, it like pretending just only to music? Low, right? Well, the thing no. about Bluetooth is that 
it's an oddball for me because technically speaking, it's supposed to be PAN. Who here remembers what PAN means? Personal area network. I was just going to say that actually. Correct. So in this case, see, they're basically Bluetooth can be both. It could be local or external because you can still get internet with Bluetooth. So you may get some trick questions. I doubt they're going to give you anything too complicated or advanced with Bluetooth. Think of Bluetooth based on the following. If they're saying Bluetooth has access to the internet and they tell you to go sync to the cloud, it's going to be an external connection. Now, if they say that they only want the music or they want to upload the data to a different phone or device, like a computer, for example, that is loco. So be a little bit cautious when you hear Bluetooth questions related to the cloud or your local computer. You don't want to get tricked by that. So good job, guys. I like that. Well, I had some really good answers there. And yes, I would say that a lot of people know Bluetooth now because of cars. I'm one of them. I need my car to have Bluetooth now. <laughs> so convenient. I had a question. I had a question. So right. to oh, add a, a quick, yeah, just a quick question. Um, so when it comes to like Bluetooth, it's like more selective because obviously when you like say you pair with your car, um, it's only like specific things. Well, depending on if you have whatever your car is, you know, you your music, your contacts, you can text or whatever through the car. But when when it's only external, it's you can do everything. Is that just what differentiates it between the two? Basically, it's what you're using it for. So you will be correct. If you're using it to sync to the cloud because it has access to the internet, you are correct. Or you don't. I give you a good example. Most cars nowadays have satellite internet. You may not be aware of it. So technically speaking, you have a method to connect just like any provider. So you got to be aware of that. So that's more of a high level I have for everyone if we're interested for security after class. But basically think of it like this, your car can be still connected to the cloud and you may not be aware of it, especially if you first get to your car and you have access to that, I think it's called Central uh, SX, a music channel where you can skip uh, music ads. I believe that's what it's called. That actually has access to the internet. So that means your car has access to the internet. And- oh, serious. Another thing to keep in mind, if you connect your Bluetooth to your phone, it is possible for your Bluetooth to give your car internet, depending on the interface of that device of your car. You may have noticed this when you start doing something called tethering, which we'll explain in the future about in Core 2, where you can actually give your car internet temporarily and vice versa because of Bluetooth. Bluetooth is just like a cable imaginary cable that you can connect to anywhere, just like we mentioned in the last class. So just think about it. When you think of Bluetooth, it's basically a wireless cable and it can be almost any cable as long as it's programmable. That's one easy way I can think about it. Any other questions? I'd like to answer any questions anybody has. All right, no questions yet. Don't be shy if you guys have any questions after class. And we can just revise here really quickly. So we have to describe what type of synchronous data we have between mobile devices, desktops, or laptops. To be honest, they're all the same, all of them. They may be a little bit different things that have to do with the software level where you may have to go here to the setting, but they're all pretty much the same thing. Either you back up locally or to the cloud. Those are your two best options. And we talked a lot about Google here and iTunes. Has anybody here ever used any third party for backups or anything else related to the cloud other than Google? I'm just curious. Nobody? That's all right. Well, I've used, I've used my, my phone has one called, a, it's, it's Samsung backs things up itself. Oh, so you have another, like a uh, Samsung backup. Back back I use Samsung backup tour. It's also pretty good. I would say that's more of a first or second party because I think it's only available for Samsung phones, but I could be wrong on that. And I see some questions here in chat about external storage. That would be considered another way to back up. I would agree. Got to make sure you keep that safe. <laughs> what about like Dropbox last? Ah, I like that one. I'm happy someone mentioned that one. Dropbox is another one. It used to be pretty big around the 2010s, 
I don't see that much anymore Dropbox, but I would say Dropbox would be another excellent third party you can use. And I see a few here about external. Yeah, I always recommend this, have an external and your cloud. You never know which one will go bad. <laughs> and oh, OneDrive, yes. OneDrive is something that we did mention too. Now it's more of a question here, I have a bit about OneDrive. Am I able to access it on my laptop or can I access it through my iPhone? So yeah, you can access it through your iPhone, believe it or not. You just download the app from the Apple store for the OneDrive and you can actually use it right there. Um, luckily, Apple's not that competitive in that field. I believe back then they used to, but not anymore, which is a good thing. And the same thing with Apple. Apple can actually, uh, if you want to use Microsoft's software, you can actually still download that on their Apple store. So that's some good news there. Now, number two is identify the type of data that could be synchronized and the two main synchronization methods used. Who here has any idea what they're talking about here? I'll give you guys a little tip. It's related to push and pull that we mentioned. I'm gonna cold call Robert. What do you think they mean by pull and push when it comes to synchronizing methods? Uh, push um, is when it sends to you and pull is you have to request it to send something like that. Oh, that's a good answer. That is the answer actually. So think of push as in, it just comes automatically. But if you have to pull it, you got to put effort. That means you are doing it manually. So that's a good response. I like that. Class got your back, Robert. <laughs> Don't worry. I got something for him. I want to make sure everyone has opportunity. How about you read number three and try to explain to that? I can help you out if you need some help there for number three. Describe the connection types available to enable synchronization uh, the connection type is the local external and bluetooth correct very good no you said exactly the categories i wanted to hear your cables bluetooth wham very good and then number four name the steps of synchronous data between mobile devices and laptop and desktop which you just explained right there so we can skip that part but one thing that we didn't mention too much was identify the common pitfalls when synchronizing data between mobile devices and laptops and desktops. And what they're really saying here is, what happens if you can't back up your data on a first, second, or third party cloud? You have external. Or what happens if you lose your external? Now you don't have a backup anymore unless you're back up with a cloud. Technically speaking, what they're really trying to tell you here is don't put your eggs in one basket. That is one pitfall when it comes to updating and synchronizing your data. Same thing when you get errors on the cloud. A common error that I used to get a lot with Android, with Google, is that if I upload something and then it doesn't synchronize, meaning it's not pushing, and then it decides to synchronize, it may delete the data that has been on your phone that has not been updated. I don't know if anybody experienced that, especially those who are gamers on Steam, I don't know how many gamers I have here with that. But basically, I can give an example. You're playing a video game. You think your data got saved. You come back to realize the game wasn't saved because it was synced incorrectly. And for some reason, it deleted the most recent data and kept the older one as a backup instead. And you lose 10 hours of gameplay, for example. Anybody has any stories they want to talk about where they think did not work correctly and some reason deleted their data? Oh, I have one when you're uploading your file to the cloud, but your, uh, your device power off and corrupts the data. That's a good one. And that has happened to me before when internet just dies. And the next time I came back to it, it wasn't working. Had to go all over again. <laughs> That's a good one. Anyone else here have experienced any weird issues when uploading? Because usually it's when you're uploading you will have problems usually. That's the most common pitfalls. All right, I guess we can conclude T29. And let's take a look here. How much time we have? Well, we can minus well start and then we can have 